week's subject, crazy colors. Why do they work? Why do these really crazy, odd, loud, uh, maybe obnoxious colors that resemble nothing natural, why do they work? Or do they work? Yeah, they do work, you know, and occasionally they work really well. But why do they work? Do they work because it's something new and that the fish haven't seen before? Maybe, and probably. Do they work because they would trigger some kind of a, an aggressive response from fish that otherwise, you know, they pass by? I think that's true also, okay? I think it's especially true. By the way, this is the new new color from JBO, Wonder Bread. Of course, anybody who's got any age on them at all remembers old Wonder Bread. I think it's still it's still in some grocery stores, especially some C stores, but it, this, it's a popular color that folks have wanted in our in our lure line and now it's available. But all these crazy colors like this, you know, why does a color like this work? <clears throat> You know, I, I've seen, I've seen in, in all the years I've fished, I've seen the real natural colors work really well, but I've equally seen crazy obnoxious colors work really well. I remember back in my early guide dates, uh, some of the first musky trips I ever took as a guide back in the early 70s, when, you know, if you didn't fish a black bucktail or a natural bucktail, for example, you just weren't in the game. You didn't, you never fished anything else, you know. And then folks started making purple bucktails. What well, looks like purple in the water, but they caught fish. And I remember my first year of guiding, I had a really hot, hot bite on muskies with lime and chartreuse on a bucktail. That original Booker, it came, became one of our original Booker tail colors. You know, that green, yellow chartreuse, that was a hot color for muskies. And in that instance, I think... It triggered an aggressive response. It was something so different, you know, coming by them on a spinner that they like anyway, but it was just something so different that it triggered big results. Now, go, you know, staying on that same, on the same thing, on the same subject with these wild colors, I've also seen where uh, it, colors like this seem to really shine, and I mean this somewhat as a pun, in really dirty water. So when you have really bad, you know, turbid water conditions, colors like this seem to stand out. And particularly when the water's really turbid, it just, show, it just gives those fish arguably a better target. It also, uh, colors like this work really well for the angler in that it gives you a visual, a better visual a lot of times on the lure, so you, you, you have a better chance of, of casting it more accurately and working it more properly over cover and through cover where a dark or you know more of a subtle pattern, it kind of disappears in the environment a little bit more and it, it's harder to see how the lure is actually working. A lot of times natural, natural patterns like you know a natural perch pattern or a natural sucker or, or you know shad type pattern can be, they're, they're just, can't be beat. And yet, here's another thing that does occur. When an awful lot of anglers, whether you're bass fishing, pike fishing, wildlife fishing, or musky fishing, a lot of times when, when too many anglers are fishing the same thing, fishing the same lure in an, in an outlandish color sometimes can make a big difference. So, you know, I, I guess as we wrap this up, it's just one of those things that you, you might want to think about if you have a really good lure, like for example, if you're if you're a big fan of the depth raider or the shallow raider in a certain color pattern, and you're having an off day, that's when going back on on a good fishing spot uh, that you may have had a follow. Here's a classic example: you got a follow on a certain lure, and the fish doesn't hit it. Go back on that fish with the same lure in a more obnoxious, louder color. Um, again, you know, just taking this a step further. Light conditions have have a, have a, a not only watercolor conditions but light conditions have an effect on how productive these lures seem to be. Classic example is, generally speaking, I like these kinds of colors in dark overcast and even in clear water. I like these kind of patterns because I can see them good. They they have kind of like almost like a halo glow to them. I can see how they work, and they seem to really trigger fish in those kind of kind of conditions. For example, the, the Elvis pattern bucktail. 
that we make. That that ice white colored pattern, it's it's really exceptional in overcast conditions, no matter what the water color is, and night fishing. So again, in summary, do these colors really make a difference? Well, I think sometimes it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you fish them often enough, you're gonna catch fish on them. But why do wild colors like this actually catch fish and how why do they work? I think sometimes the answer is right in front of you. It's just because you're throwing something different at them. And if you trigger fish with them, you find something special, you could be onto something for a while. You know, a hot color that will produce fish after fish after fish. So, you know, don't be afraid to give these wild colors a try, these crazy wild colors, when the regular stuff, when the natural stuff doesn't work. Or it's, or it's just drawing follows. Sometimes they want something that just triggers a higher level of aggressive response. And that's the difference between a follow and a strike.